Welcome to another episode of the 604 Garage. Welcome back to the 604 Garage and today we're going to talk about a little accident that I got into in the 1LE. So that's the reason why you haven't seen it in any videos of late. That's the reason why I kind of put the turbo project on hold and got the 81 back in the road so I could use that in the summer. And what I want to do is kind of go through some of the contributing factors or sort of the things that led up to the accident. And before I do that, let's just talk about the word accident. A lot of people consider what happens to create an accident all negative or bad things and the outcome of course is damage or personal loss or potential injury and that's why we call it an accident but an accident can also be looked at as a miracle for example and so we'll go about and talk about all those contributing factors and show you how there is a little bit of miracleism in there and if the outcome was positive or something that was really good or beneficial then people would look at it more as if it was a miracle. So here's what happened. So it was about, well, let's see, five, six months ago now, it was May 25th, and I was out doing some errands in the 1LE. I had just put the Supercar 3s back on the car. So we were experiencing in the 604 the worst rainstorm that we'd seen in probably the entire year. It was absolutely brutal. A lot of standing water, etc. And as I was driving home, I had finished my errands, I was driving home, and it was probably around 7.30 at night, it was getting dark. Um, I decided to turn the traction control and the stability control off, where there was no one around, and give the car a little squirt of throttle in, I think it was third or fourth gear, and everything was fine, the car, you know, stepped out a little bit, everything was fine, and I thought, okay, there really isn't much traction. So I was trying to test how much water shedding ability the Supercar 3s had. Now, my tires were probably around 60 to 70% tread, um, which isn't a lot. I think they come with around 8, 30 seconds or 9, 30 seconds. So there still wasn't a lot. And Supercar 3s, guys, do not do well in standing water. So I was kind of trying to test that theory. All good. Fast forward probably about, I don't know, 10 minutes later, I come to an intersection and I've got the wipers on full blast. Again, it's starting to get dark. I come to an intersection and the next thing I know, there is a car immediately right in front of me. So I had two choices, hit the car or try to go around it. And so my immediate choice was I'm gonna to try to go around it. So I turned to the right, the car did everything it was supposed to. And as I was coming back to the left to get back in my lane around the car, the back end kicked out and I was on a little bit of throttle. I was in about fourth gear, probably doing about 2,500 RPM. And the back end snapped loose on that car. Now. The 1LE compared to the 81 has been very twitchy. It always snaps out. The 81, you can hang the back end out, one finger, the steering wheel, you know, check your text messages, do whatever you want. And that thing is the easiest thing to drive sideways. The 1LE, especially in the wet, it'll go instantaneously. So the car snapped sideways and went into a drift and I went across oncoming traffic over a curb and right at that spot before going over the curb, there was a small tree, probably about a foot and a half in diameter, and I hit that tree as the car was spinning, right with the front fender where it meets the tire, meets the front suspension. I hit that tree and it continued to snap the car around, and I came within one inch of hitting a small building, a small shop that was nearby, so very, very lucky. While I was hitting that tree, the tree snapped and bent over the hood and almost came through the windshield and almost hit me, so Yes, it was an accident. So let's look at the contributing factors that were at play. I had everything off. Normally I never drive with everything off in the rain, but for some reason that day I was trying to test, you know, the water shedding ability of the Supercar 3. So traction control, stability control were off. The car was still in tour mode. You know, I wasn't going fast. I wasn't power shifting gears. We had limited visibility. Um, there was a car right in front of me. It was just past dusk at this point. It was starting to get dark. Um, I decided to make some abrupt movements, right? I upset the tires. At that spot, there was a massive amount of water that was collecting, so I hydroplaned as well. 
um, in that moment where I was maneuvering around the car. And um, let's look at the other factors. Let's look at where I happened to go over the curb. So where I happened to go over the curb, there were new trees planted probably every 100 feet or so. So I happened to hit the curb and right where that tree was planted. So the chances of me hitting a tree going off the road in that area were very slim, but I happened to pick just that spot. And then the building, the building that I almost crashed into, and I'll show you guys some pics. All right, onto the pictures now. You can see where the car hit the tree with the driver's front tire there. You can actually see from this angle as well some of the impact damage. And look how close I am to that gate. That gate was right in front of the bay door that you can see here. So the car was really close to going through that bay door. There was a guy working on the other side. And then you can see here where the tree actually tried to come through the windshield itself. So you look at the accident, you look at all the contributing factors, and when you add all these contributing factors together, you've got your accident or your incident or your miracle if you're looking at a positive outcome. So yes, there was a miracle there as well, I feel. It was a miracle that there was no one coming in the oncoming direction because I would have been hammered by somebody. It's a miracle that I stopped before that building. So maybe there was a miracle that that tree was there because it stopped me, it slowed me down, it reduced the momentum of this 3,700 pound car as I was sliding across the road. Um, so there a lot of miracles there, or a lot of things that happened to reduce the potential outcome of this, which would have been me hurt. So I'm very thankful I wasn't hurt, I'm very thankful that nobody else was hurt. And you know what, a car was damaged, but a car is a piece of metal, rubber, electrical, wiring, etc. A car can be replaced. But we'll go into the car in a second. Okay, so now let's talk about the car. So the car looked pretty bad at first sight. I thought, wow, this thing may be a write-off. Um, and I'm not sure how that's going to go, but we're going to have to go through all this with insurance and everything. So as I found out, the car was valued a lot more than what I paid for it. So I bought the car in about June of 2020 right in the middle of COVID and I paid 40,000 Canadian flat for that car. It had 30,000 kilometers on it, which is somewhere around, I don't know, 20 or 15 or 20,000 miles. Um, very low mile car. It had just put, they had just put a brand new set of tires on it for me. There was a little curb rash on the wheel. I had them do all that in, all that in for 40K. So I think I did a pretty good uh, job. I got a pretty good deal on that car. Um, I do have a loan on it, etc. But you know, I put some money down and so I'm well under that in what I owe, which is fine. Now fast forward to the accident, ICBC or our local insurance company here who we buy all of our insurance through, um, they valued the car at $57,000 because it is a 2SS 1LE, highly optioned vehicle. So they valued the car at around 57,000. So they came back and said, well, your potential damage is $47,000 or so. So they would roughly repair $47,000 worth of damage. So what was actually damaged on the car? Well, as you can see in the pictures, the front fender was damaged. Um, we had a couple rims that were damaged as I hopped over the curb. There was some damage to the hood. There was some damage to the driver's side door. Um, there was a little bit of damage to the roof where the tree came down. So some small little dents in there, everything, some scratches in the paint. And the most, the majority of the damage you don't actually see, the majority of the damage was underneath the car. So the front driver's side uh, suspension was smashed. So the upper and lower control arms, their aluminum, they were broken. Um, the front cradle or the um, engine or the cross member of the vehicle, that was damaged where those suspension points connect to. And also while I was going over that tree, on the stump or what was left of the tree damaged the transmission cross member. So the car needed a brand new transmission cross member, it needed a brand new engine cross member or front subframe for that matter, it needed brand new upper and lower control arms. They replaced everything on that driver's side suspension. They put a brand new strut, new mag ride strut in the car. The only thing they kept was uh, the rotor and the caliper. Everything else was brand new. They put a brand new fender on the car, they put a brand new fender liner on the car, um, and all the panels on the car that weren't touched by the accident, I'm getting repainted as well. So the rear quarters, um, they did have some rock chipping. So all you guys that own 1LEs or anything with a front tire that is fairly wide and fairly sticky and it has a little bit of wider rear hips on it like the 1LE, you know that you get rock chips. You know, especially when you're turning, rocks like to collect in these tires, especially when it's warm and fire out and 
hit your rear quarter panel and do a little bit of damage. Well, I had some uh, rock chipping damage on there, and so I'm having the rear quarters repainted as well. I'm having everything on the passenger side of the vehicle repainted that won't match the driver's side, i.e. the door, the front fender is there as well. The hood's getting repainted, of course, because there was some of that tree damage. So the car should look fairly new. Um, it should actually look way better than it did when I bought it. It's got all four new tires on it. Most of the wheels are either been refinished or they are brand new. They put two brand new wheels on the car. So I fought for that. Um, yeah, the front bumper is repainted. So most of the vehicle is going to look fantastic. And I will do a video and show you how it looks afterwards. I'm super excited to see it. The only crappy part is it's in the middle of winter. It's November now. I still haven't got the car back. I'm gonna get it back right in the middle of winter, so we're gonna have to figure out something to keep that paint looking as good as we can. Other things, yeah, the airbags didn't go off on the vehicle at all. There's a big expense there, so it was a side hit. Very, very, very thankful that I did not get hurt. So. And here's some of the photos from the shop. These are the most recent photos I have. The car's getting put back together, as you can see. They've got the fender off, they've got the hood repaired, they've got the door repaired. I'm doing some repair work on the passenger side rear quarter panel. There's a little ding there, etc. It's all getting ready for paint, and it should be painted fairly soon and back for reassembly. I hope you liked the video and that's the reason why you haven't seen the 1LE for a while and I wanted to say thanks all for watching. I'm at 300 subs now so it means maybe I gotta do another burnout video. Comment down below if you want to see another 300 sub burnout video or a 300 sub burnout video or something else. Otherwise, have a great day. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Take care.